Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. Hello, everyone. My name is Erica, joined as always by my co-host Carter. And together we comprise Seaweed Brain, a Percy Jackson podcast, which for the nearly last four years, we've been seeking to answer the question, is Persebeth the greatest love story ever told? Today, we have two elite Persebeth scholars here to help us answer that question. (laughs) Walker Scobell, who plays Percy Jackson, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? Good, good. And Leah DeBay Jeffries, Miss Annabeth Chase, how is it going? It is going very good, (laughs) ma'am. Thank you guys for being here. Carter, take us away. We're so excited to be doing this interview with you both. Congratulations on the season two renewal. Thank you. Thank you so much. How does it feel? Are you all going back through the Sea of Monsters, rewriting? Are you excited for what the writers are cooking up? We are. We're all talking about that, like in the group chat. We call all the time. I think it was, I think we talked about this yesterday, actually, about like how fun it's going to be because, I mean, we're going to see Charlie and Dior a lot more this season. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's going to be really cool. Yeah. It's going to be very, very fun. Like, I'm really excited also. Because it's more water scenes and stuff. I know oh, yeah. probably, I know Walker already has been through a lot of water scenes in the first <laughs> thing. But for me, I only get got to do it once. So I'm excited because I like drinking water and I like being in water. <laughs> so yeah, the water. We love a hydrated queen. That's very important. <laughs> <laughs> so our plan today is to essentially journey across the Riordan verse, starting with season one of the show, but then expanding a bit into the books to talk about some like historically, culturally significant Percy and Annabeth moments. And you two, as we mentioned, are Percy Jackson scholars. You've both been big fans of the Ryden verse from a young age, just like us. So to set the scene a little bit, give us some background. When you were first reading these books as little kids, do you remember like your early opinions on Percy and Annabeth's relationship? Uh, Leah, you want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll go first. Um, me, when I read it, because I read it in fifth grade, I feel like I have read a lot of like rem- romance type books back then also, but for some reason, this is going to come off so crazy, but I felt like I was just like reading the books and not actually like putting myself in it as yeah. much as I should be. Like I, I mean, yeah. you know, I wasn't like fifth grade. So like when certain scenes came up, I was like, oh, let me skip over this. Hold on. <laughs> Before I get in trouble. So, <laughs> so yeah, I felt like I wasn't like, putting myself into like, oh, look at this little cutesy stuff. Like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, my teacher's spying on me. Let me skip this part. But <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I feel like I was doing that. But now rereading again, though, like, I love the way how Mr. Rick put it and the slow burn of everything. Like, it's really good. Mm-hmm. I agree. Honestly, I had no idea it was even a thing until season four when she kissed him. And even then, I was like, <laughs> maybe they're just really close friends i don't (laughs) i didn't i just didn't catch on until like way later i think that's very fair i was having this conversation with a friend about avatar the last airbender and they were like what did you think like what was your favorite ship in avatar the last airbender as a kid and i was like ships i was not thinking about that i was like let's (laughs) zoom past this so we can get to the fights especially like between like katara and ang i was not expecting i mean it works out very well uh like it, it looks it's like perfect at the end i can't imagine like a different, you know, setup. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. At the beginning, like when you look back, it's just, it's, it's just funny, you know. Yeah, it's very funny. <laughs> I feel like you can definitely tell when there's like um a more like a, I don't know how to put it, but like like a romance thing or something. Yeah. You can tell when it's in there when it's a live action thing. Like if you mm-hmm. um like mm-hmm. even if you see it in like animations, so it's a little bit harder. But definitely in books, it's hard because you're like mm-hmm. reading the words and stuff and things. But like seeing it actually come to life and seeing them actually look at them and give them hugs and stuff and things is that you can definitely picture way more. I agree. Yeah. It's just, people were definitely surprised. I I remember we were talking about this the other day, all of us. It's, it's weird how much stronger it comes off in live action. Like you don't think about it, but like when you're seeing it fold out in front of you, it, you can tell, you know? Yeah. 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 In a book, it just says they hug, but you have to decide what the hug looks like. You know, that that's that's a big yeah. deal. It's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> who hugs who first? 
<laughs> oh, exactly. There was the one I can't remember. I think they'd removed it, but the the arch scene when I or like after the arch when I get out, uh, and then Annabeth runs over and I think she's gonna hit me, and then she hugs me. Like <laughs> they deleted it. They they uh they like cut it out of the frame, but they told me yeah. to not be sure about it. So like every take, my hands are just like hovering behind her back. <laughs> So, like seeing everyone be like, "Wow, this is moving fast." I was like, "Kind of, yeah." yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get the full picture. They literally never show any of like they never show like a full body shot of like Percy hugging back. It's literally mm-hmm. just like anime doing like this, and I'm like, "Oh, mm-hmm. like I'm closing my eyes." So, like, which <laughs> yeah. that came out very wrong, but you know what I mean. Like I'm closing yeah. my eyes, yeah. and, like, and all that stuff. But like in the full body shots and stuff that I had from like behind the scenes, literally Walker's doing the exact same thing. But like in all the scenes, it's just like just standing there. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the power just, of like, editing, arms right? Down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. I think we also wanted to walk through season one, ask about some other specific moments in the show. You know, like the book, season one is tracking Percy and Annabeth's journey, sort of from strangers to co-workers to friends. And the first big challenge that they face in the show is Medusa. And, you know, episode three, there's kind of a long-running big argument between Percy and Annabeth until Medusa brings that all to a head. And we wanted to know whether you enjoy playing that initial disagreement and conflict and also, whether or not you think that your character was right in um, those little arguments. That's a good question. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, at first she's <laughs> always right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure about that. I think they're both right. I felt like it was just like a back and forth thing and to, until we like realized the stuff. Like, how do I explain it? We thought the yeah. way how we're always arguing like at camp and on the quest, I felt like during this argument, we probably thought that we were going to be like, Oh yeah, I actually accepted her thing and all that stuff. But just like petty, when, you know. Yeah, we like we both thought that like um that each other was gonna say like, Oh yeah, I gave you up. But when we actually said I didn't, I killed them and stuff, I feel mm-hmm. like that's when we realized like, oh, never mind, we actually we're not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, sound, I don't know why. Annabeth is yeah, right is what, what you're saying, saying right? Say. Annabeth is uh, right. <laughs> Annabeth is always right is what you're saying. <laughs> no, yeah, I agree. That was a good answer. Thank you. There were also some very epic new Curse of Beth scenes in season one, which was obviously like our favorite part about watching the show, specifically these scenes that allowed us to see an Annabeth's perspective in the early parts of the story, since the books are in Percy's perspective. So I'm specifically thinking about the big speech that Annabeth gives to Hephaestus in episode five in the Tunnel of Love. Um, Leah, did giving that speech um, change the way you thought about Percy and Annabeth's relationship? Do you remember when you first read that speech and were like, whoa, this is this is heavy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely did. Because, you know, also when you film... Um, a series or like just actually anything in general you never go in line of the scenes mm-hmm. like you go from episode six back to one so when I filmed well, that was episode five yeah when I filmed episode five I'm sorry I keep forgetting so long ago when I filmed episode five and I read the whole entire like page essay of it um I was like oh this is really heartfelt and I can't remember but like we went back into like an earlier episode right after that and I had to change me from being nice to him, like, like, <laughs> oh, he's not that way and stuff, you know, like, I, I care about him and stuff. Like, I had to switch from that back to going back to arguing with them. So I definitely, <laughs> like, yeah, so, like, I definitely noticed how much it changed and, like, my perspective on him or basically Annabeth's perspective on Percy. Like, when I was doing that, I had to make sure that... um me and Annabeth connect and make sure that we both see that we actually care um, beneath that or behind all that stubbornness and meanness of me, Tim. So yeah, I felt like doing that part was really, really fun and good because I was able to change it up from being all mean and stuff like, you're rude and like, you're ugly and stuff, whatever, to like, (laughs) I mean, I actually, ouch, okay. I'm going to cry that one off tonight. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was like the worst thing I could ever say. Sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I meant like you're me and you're bad at doing something. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. It's kind of like the first time where you realize that this is something that 
Annabeth is kind of insecure about. You know, it's the one thing that Percy has that she doesn't, which is hard for her mm -hmm. to like kind of grasp because she's used to just knowing everything. Not in a, like mean way. Annabeth <laughs> does know everything. I feel like you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally understand that. <laughs> It's true. She knows everything and she's always right. And she's the prettiest. Unfortunately. <laughs> One of the other scenes that we wanted to ask you about is towards the end in episode eight, when we have Annabeth giving her necklace to Percy, where in your show, instead of, you know, that being before the fight with Ares, it's before Percy goes off to Olympus to deal with Zeus. We wanted to ask you, Walker, what you think is going through Percy's head in that moment. The acting uh... was gorgeous. <laughs> oh, I mean, I think there's a whole like lead up to that moment. I think he kind of expects to get there, and then Zeus would be like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't know that my sons would betray me. You're so much smarter than me." Blah blah blah. Here's a bunch of drop cards or something like that. But I guess <laughs> I feel like he gets up there and he, he expects Zeus to do something about it. You know what I mean? Like Cronus is coming back they're all going to die. The world might like come to an end, but Zeus just kind of brushes him off. And then Percy is like standing there and his quest is done. He gave Zeus his bolt back, but there's still going to be a war. You know what I mean? And I don't think he like understands that. And so I don't know. It just like triggers something in him, which I feel like kind of comes from Poseidon. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just like an initial impulse. It's part of the ADHD, you know, he just like can't, not say something that's wrong you know what i mean he has to point it out which i think is a very important part of his character you know very ridiculously specific question and also i know that you guys filmed like years ago um so you can <laughs> pass on this one if you want but when annabeth puts that necklace on percy there's this great shot of percy you pulling up your hand and sort of like touching the ring on annabeth's mm -hmm. necklace and that's something I believe in the show isn't like explicitly stated where that ring comes from. But obviously, you know where that ring comes from. Yeah. And I was wondering, like, if you remember that moment or that day on set, like, was that something you did like consciously or is that just something that came, you know, naturally in the scene because you're so in character in this world? It's something that we all kind of talked about a lot. Uh, wow. Like, if you look back in episode four, um, that's kind of when, when Annabeth is talking about her past and her dad and stuff. Like the whole time he made sure to not exactly mention that it's his ring, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a part of him that she still has. And I feel like when she gives that to Percy, it's, this is like the moment where he realizes that she actually believes in him and she really trusts him. You know what I mean? Cause she's giving like the only piece of her dad that she has left. I'm mean, not that he died, but like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Effectively. Yeah. 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 Okay, there is one last moment that we definitely have to ask you about in the show, which is Luke's big reveal and the huge change that now, you know, Percy and Annabeth are both present for this. Mm -hmm. um, Leah, we wanted to ask you, when, when do you think Annabeth started to get suspicious? Like, when do you think Annabeth made the decision to also go out there and join them? Hmm. Like, put on the invisibility cap and follow them into the woods. Yeah. Because she was starting to get sus of Luke. Sorry, my dog is right here. She's kind of hearing it. Uh, <laughs> She's like, Luke, that guy? Boo. Boo, <laughs> that guy. <laughs> no, literally. I love Charlie, though. Sorry. <laughs> <He's really good. laughs> uh, <laughs> but I feel like I started to get, like, the tiniest bit of suspicion, about, like, 35 45% of that started getting suspicious when um i was saying go to camp have blood and i said toss the cv brain and stuff and i checked it like to like call the gods and stuff like to go back to camp have blood to call them and when luke was there and i was like what are you doing there and stuff and then he was like oh uh, uh i don't know <laughs> and stuff like you know like you know chiron's holding it back down and stuff i feel like that was one part and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i also feel like it was um Oh my gosh, how do I explain it? I'm so I'm trying to think because it's yeah, I know what you mean. It's like it's been so, are you wearing your Annabeth go by the way? I'm sorry, I just Me? noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> it looks just like it. I literally I can't I can't fit my Annabeth go anymore. <laughs> you can't like, fit dude. I have a whole bin full of clothes that just don't fit. You are so lucky. When I went on live and I tried to put it on, my literal oh, sleep. Right here. Yes. <laughs> At least that means that I grew though. That's good. You did, you definitely grew. 
I feel like we've all, we went to, we've gotten to like a point, like me, Arian, and Leah, where we all just kind of grow proportionately now. So like, yeah, we, we stay the same height difference away from each other, but we grow the same amount. Oh, that's well, good. I'm 60 now. No offense. Six, six, eight. Six, eight. You guys yeah. can always sell your clothes on eBay, you know? That's Secretly what I was thinking. List Bang. them on Facebook Marketplace, <laughs> authentic Annabeth Chase Facebook jacket. Market. For auction it off. Maybe look, I don't, I don't use Facebook, but I definitely go on Facebook Marketplace to look at like iPads, Apple Watches, and all that stuff. I tried to, I used to go on Facebook Marketplace to buy Fortnite accounts. I never got one. I go on Facebook Marketplace for indoor plants. It's a great place for that. Indoor plants? You know, like, the funniest thing ever is that when I got my Nintendo for my birthday, it was um, a used one or something. Basically, when I got it, they had, like, so many games on there. They even left their Fortnite account on there, and it had, like, like thousands and thousands of V-Bucks on there. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was so lucky in life. I was like, find. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play everything. <laughs> this episode is unofficially sponsored by Facebook Marketplace by Meta. Thank you, Meta. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Sorry, I never got off track. No, but that was, I mean, I think that's a great, that, that makes a lot of sense to us because we were wondering if it was that um, Iris message scene where Annabeth is seeing Luke hiding in the office where she's like, what are you doing there? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a couple rapid fire show questions before we talk a bit about the book. Walker, what was your favorite Persebeth moment scene to act out? Probably the tunnel of love mm -hmm. when I decided to sit in the chair, you know, <laughs> I think it was just Emmy award. It was so easy to like make my eyes water since <laughs> there was so much chlorine in the air. <laughs> it was just like, I don't know. It, it was just a fun day. And we got to be like soaking wet all day, which is always fun. Yeah. But the nice part about that, like being wet all day, like where we were in that scene was that they made the water so warm because all of us, like a bunch of people had to be in it to like film and uh, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. like for safety and stuff in case we fell off. So they made the water like super hot, but it steamed up a bunch. So it was like, there's like a sauna in there while they oh, filmed it, which is super nice. That's so good. Oh my gosh, now yeah. thinking about it, I want that back. <laughs> I want that back too, yeah. It was also filmed in uh, November, so it was really cold. So when you came out, mm -hmm. like that warm, like, like wet body that you had just like froze up like <laughs> it did not feel good oh no, it was bad hopefully see if monsters is like we were talking about like i mean obviously we don't know where it's filming but hopefully it's like florida or something or like in the summer yeah. you know you can be we're rooting for you all to be warm yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're rooting for you to be warm outside in the sunlight yeah. <laughs> um leah what was your favorite person Beth scene to watch back when you were watching the show oh okay um if if, if there was a long one like like a slow burn of a long scene, then definitely tunnel of love. Cause like, you know, at the beginning I was like, oh Percy just push and stuff and whatever. And then then it went from <laughs> like, Percy, stand up, please. Like that was a good <laughs> one. And also <laughs> definitely in episode eight, when I was giving the necklace, uh like here's mm -hmm. the crazy thing is that I never knew that Walker was actually like turning his head. Like, I didn't know that either. I <laughs> until we we watched it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, like, I was like, when did I get there? What? <laughs> it just felt awkward to like stare at Grover while she was doing that. You know what I mean? It's like right, the camera's like right in my face. <laughs> it was the right move. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was so yeah. good. It was good. It's yeah. historically yeah. significant moment, actually. Yeah. I like the music also for it. Oh, yeah. More historically significant than the Renaissance. This is what I was like. Oh. <laughs> Walker, when you guys went to the Empire State Building and you were in Capture the Flag costuming, who decided to put you in Captain the Flag costuming? Was that your decision? So thank you for asking that. I've never actually <laughs> talked about this before. Um, I have never stopped thinking about it. Well, Aaron, <laughs> who's like on this call right now, uh, I, we were all just hanging out and we were talking. I can't remember. We were, I think we were like, I think it was in Toronto uh, when we were driving around to the different like radio stations. And I asked her because my, my whole family came out to New York uh, and we all hung out for like two weeks there while we were doing all that press and the premiere and stuff. So I asked her, I was like, my mom's driving out. So why does it, why don't I just ask her to bring my full Greek battle armor? And then everyone's like, all right, you can wear it to the Empire State Building. So I said, okay. Um, they didn't <laughs> let me bring in the sword because it's a weapon. Fair enough. <laughs> but I did get to wear the armor. Yeah. It was beautiful. And then I had like a whole cocktail dress on. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It looked like I was going to like some ballroom and right next to me is 
they're coming back from like killing the Minotaur or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. The juxtaposition of it was very Percy Jackson, like the yeah. ball gown, the capture flag. Different types of glamour. Yeah. <laughs> Different types of glam. Yeah. Um, Leah, is there a song that comes to mind when you think about Percibeth? Like, what would you put on the Percibeth playlist? Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, oh so you can sorry. cite you can cite multiple if you want. Whatever comes to mind. <laughs> this is a good question. Oh yeah, I got this one down track. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> that came out very strong. But I uh, basically, um, "Never Be Like You" by Flume and like Kai. Um, definitely, that's like one of my favorite songs. Well, basically, let's just put number one for "Never Be Like You." I I have so many more. It's literally like all my Apple Music. Well, it's not like an album. Okay, that's gonna sound weird, but like just like I know it's like scattered. Yeah, yeah it's like scattered because so many people like use those songs. But like, definitely, never be like you is first. Oh, and I'm not even gonna lie to you. That last bit of um, like the instrumental part, like when the song's about the end of the song "Cardigan" by Taylor Swift. Whoa! Like, oh, that's specific. Because I swear to you, this is gonna like this crazy. I was watching YouTube shorts on my in my living room TV, and a person at at uh, edit came up. It was really cool, actually. But um, I basically have like a, a surround sound bass with my uh, TV. So <laughs> when that song came on, it was so strong. But like, it wasn't bad strong. It was like amazing. I was like, <laughs> I watched that thing like mean. five times. Just like damn it, I was like, at least by like the second <laughs> one. Like I'm not even lying. At least by like the second or third one, I noticed that I was in the video. Like I, know. <laughs> I didn't like the song. <laughs> Okay, Cardigan by Taylor Swift. That's a good one. Wait, Walker, do you have any songs you want to add to the person by playlist? I do have some. Let me check if I can. I'll look through real quick. Oh, we can check? Yeah, pull up your own person Beth playlist. I don't have a playlist, but I always thought like a good song, because I always like, I don't know, I, this is going to sound weird, but I always think of like songs that they could put in in like different scenes in the books. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, Oh, sorry. So I always thought like the fall into Tartarus was like somewhere only we know. I thought that was yes. Like, <laughs> it's pretty sad. Which one? Huh? Somewhere only we know. That's like our childhood. Oh my! Oh my gosh! But, like I'll, I'll randomly <laughs> hear something and it just like reminds me of it. So I mean, Tech it, you know, Tech it. That sounds. That reminds me of Percy Beth. Eventually, there you go. Just just because of the first word. Because it's a slow burn. Get it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. You the know what we know has me gagged. Sorry, go ahead, Leah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my apology. I um uh, it's a song I Know You. Um by I forgot her name, but I think it's like it's like oh no, oh no, oh my god, I like how it goes. It's by Is it Faye Webster? <laughs> I think wait, yeah, 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 yeah. By Faye Webster. <laughs> it's that one. It's I Know You. And here with me by it goes. I think it's David, but like it's um, um, it's like D four V D. So it's almost yes. Like a, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's I see that that yeah. Oh, and Gilded Lily by Colts. I just that one. Oh my gosh! I, like if you listen to the song, but it's called Gilded Lily by Colts. That part right there definitely reminds me of falling into Tartarus and stuff. Wow. Like just the song of it and also like it's just you you gotta listen to it because it goes into like this soft, soft, soft looking out for you. Huh? Looking out for you. Looking up for you. <laughs> you know that song? I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up by Joy again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 I'm gonna put these into like a Spotify playlist. Um so I can yeah. listen to all of them, like go through them one at a time. <laughs> we should make a giant. I always thought about it. I know a lot of people that like have. Play- I think Arian has one. Leah, I think. Do you have one of like a playlist that you play, but like to get into like character, or, like oh, yeah. for like a scene or something? I've never done that. I don't know. I have one. It's literally called Percy Jackson. It's yeah. called Percy Jackson. <laughs> Percy Jackson. I never <laughs> That's that You guys could do a collab playlist. Like Carter and I do collab oh, playlists do a collab. lot. You could do you collab one for Percy Beth songs. Is that an Apple Music? On what's well, on oh. Spotify. Spotify. Oh. Yeah. That's okay. Sorry, Leah. <laughs> I just have music too. It's just a better deal. Like it like think about it. It's it's going through the same <laughs> like provide like you don't have it's not a separate bill. It's it's all in the same thing. It's oh, you yeah. just pay off your Apple. 
And, and so also, think if you're um, separate thing with probably mm-hmm. more taxes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also if you and, you and also if you do a family do, which said that's what my family has, oh. yeah. Because you know, even if you that was gonna come off of obviously everyone has a family, but if you don't have a family that wants to listen to Apple Music, all you gotta do is just create a bunch of emails and then just like, you know. No, exactly. My brother David, James, just make up random names. Yeah. <laughs> like hopefully nobody heard. okay i'll consider this I'm working on my taxes right now so i'll look at my spotify bill <laughs> and i'll think about it <laughs> okay well your homework is to make a collaborative playlist um for Percibeth songs oh, no, no homework. and you could then you could sell it on facebook you know if you make so much money people <laughs> would pay for that place, yeah yeah um okay so we've got some time left to switch into a little bit talking about the books and instead of we were like how should we do this we could just like rattle off book scenes to you guys but instead we wrote down some scenes in pieces of paper and we put them in a hat. So we're going to draw <laughs> some scenes out of this hat and read out some quotes from the books. And we'll have you guys guess which book these quotes may have come from. Um, and we can talk a little bit about these historically significant person that scenes. Some of them are easy. Some of them are harder. So don't feel bad if you don't get it. No one's judging you. There's no prize at the end of this. <laughs> win this I'm being honest we already know that you're Persebeth scholars and you guys are going to play on a team together it's all good all right okay this is good we're on a team yeah you're on the team. This. yeah is there any from the sixth book we've got okay so we've got first five books we've got some from heroes of olympus and there may even be a chalice of the gods quote somewhere oh. in this hat. Okay. i don't know if we'll get to it though do you have them like lined up in the hat they're random they're random okay they'll be out of order <laughs> great here we go first one you dropped this. Oh, that's Mark Fatina. <laughs> oh, whoa! <laughs> Mark of Athena. Wow. It is Mark of Athena. It is the... What? It's Charleston, right? The Charleston Harbor, right, yep. Carter? Yeah, when, when <laughs> Percy, and she throws her, her dagger in. Yeah, Historically wow. significant. That's <sighs> that was really impressive. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Again, I told you, I'm good at the Percy Jackson ones, but here's the Olympics. I gotta go back on that. <laughs> I'm mostly the same way too. I don't. I don't know how I got that. Here's of Olympus. The books. I mean, the books are so thick. You know, there's a lot mm-hmm. of content. In them. More quotes to remember. Yeah. More quotes. Yeah. It's, it's like a separate. Like it's. It's not one point of view. It's like different ones. So like. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I'll like completely forget. I. I remember when I was little. I like would accidentally skip over a point of view just on accident because I thought, oh, like if I'm on Percy, shouldn't I go to the next Percy yes. one? And then I would go That's back and, very and I would reasonable. read through it, and it would just feel really weird. <laughs> and like out of place but yeah yeah i'm i'm one of those people that skips the jason chapters i really do <gasps> I, I i i'm sorry to admit what? it but i do <laughs> skip the jason chapters he's no percy you know i can't do that anymore i try i when i was little i used to skip everyone chapters except like annabeth percy and yeah that's pretty, pretty yeah. much it i used to go to annabeth and percy <laughs> because were the only like because i didn't like at the beginning i didn't know who these people were and so i was like yeah i just need someone i know yeah. Uh, so I just skipped to Annabeth and everybody. But yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Here we go. Let's take, let's get another one. Oh, okay. Here's a quote. I mean, she looked good. Really good. I probably would have been Last tongue tied. Oh, close. Close. Not quite. Wait, is, it, is it the. Oh, no, no. This is two. The, 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 the two. This is two <laughs> uh, on the island when <laughs> Annabeth comes out and. Oh, with her hair. Oh. Sorry. Yep. It's while Percy's a guinea pig. That's correct. Yeah, because I'm not thinking about you're done. <laughs> yeah, when you get like all done up by, uh, and I can't remember the, the Cersei. Goddess, Cersei. I can't even. I can I can remember that quote. I couldn't remember the goddess's name. Wow, I feel like if I had gotten to the end of the quote, like it would have been a giveaway, and you guys got it before I even got to the part where he says, um, "I probably would have been tongue tied if I could have said anything except." Oh, uh, <laughs> so this when he's a guinea pig. So are we winning? I think you're definitely winning. We're winning. Very successful. Yeah. (laughs) Sea of Monsters. Great moment from Sea of Monsters. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. Here's a good one. She looked at me like she was drinking in the fact that I was still here. And I realized I was doing the same thing. The world was collapsing. And the only thing that mattered to me was that she was alive. No, that got it. Wait, is it it five? It's five. I was going to say four in uh, in, in Mount St. Helens. Oh, no, that's a good guess. That's like um almost almost at the very end. Oh, you're right. That's that's right before the whole underwater thing. Maybe this is part of the battle. I think I think this is I think this is when they're talking to Luke and Luke is like, "Did you still love me?" 
Yeah, and she's like, yeah. <laughs> oh no, oh no. Oh, that's not <laughs> Oh, that's not oh Oh, uh, and how would you? <laughs> we talk about that sometimes. We're just thinking about it, like our actual ages. When I mean, when I think when we're filming season five, I don't know how long. I'm gonna make an estimate. We're probably gonna be like eighteen or nineteen, right? How old's Charlie gonna be if he's nineteen now, and he's turning twenty? Charlie and you're turning is 50. forty-five years old. At that He'll be forty-five Elderly like us. Uh-huh. <laughs> Elderly like us. Yeah. You guys are 45? You you exfoliate, don't you? We're 24. Oh! We are like probably the actual age Charlie will be by the time that you all get to. Um, yeah. Oh my God. Olympian. We're the age that Grover is technically. In the first book. In the Lightning oh. Thief, yeah. <laughs> That's weird. That's why. Elderly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we can get a couple more in here. Oh, 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 okay. What is it? The Prophecy? Then she did something that really surprised me. She blinked back tears and put out her arms. I stepped forward and hugged her. Butterflies started turning my stomach into a mosh pit. This one's a little vague. It's from the original series. You need the, you need the lemon soap detail. Oh, I think yeah. that's very important. Oh, <laughs> it goes on to talk about Annabeth's hair smelling like lemon soap. This and is then... number three, isn't it? Three? Four. It's Battle of the Labyrinth. Of course, it's four. We oh, needed no, to give you more context. Clips is island. We needed to give you more context. It's like, <laughs> and then it's like they're in the Athena cabin, and then like her brother walks in, and he's like, "Oh, I can leave. I can leave." And oh, she's like, yeah. We were just looking at maps. <laughs> well, that's five, isn't it? That's five, well, I right? So. I think it's four, right? Car- Carter would know. We 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 just freshly googled these. So. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? I'm pretty sure, but we can double check. We can we can count that one moot. Well, let's right, ask Rick. <laughs> yeah, well, Rick. Hello. Excuse me. Where's Rick? Richard. Let's, let's call him up. <laughs> Where's Rick? Sorry. Rick and Becky. Okay. <laughs> Aha. Get back. I slashed the air in a wide arc, oh, driving yep. the rest That's of the demigods. Number five, Ethan Nakamura, <laughs> when he stabs Annabeth. That was right. Wait, which one? That's five. Remember when you get stabbed? When you dive in front of me? <laughs> yeah. I'll do the whole thing at once so you can hear it. It's get back. <laughs> I slashed the air in a wide arc, driving the rest of the demigods away from Annabeth. Nobody touches her. Oh, see? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now I know that. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's the yeah, that's right. <laughs> so when you said nobody touches her, like a lot of edits that I see, they pull a lot of quotes from the books. And it's literally the ones that you have. And I'm like, you yes, sound not familiar. That's yeah. <laughs> I know we have like five minutes left, but did you guys ever see the... Uh... The fake, like the audio, like the AI audio of oh. Annabeth going like, Percy, stop. And it's from, I'm pretty sure it's from House of Hades when I'm like. Oh my God, the poison? Yeah, the poison. And you're saying how much misery she could take? Yeah, I was, I thought, I, I was like, Jesus, I, I don't recall saying that in the lightning. <laughs> Is scene. that weird for you to see people doing that with your voice? Dude, <laughs> it's so weird when I see like other, oh my gosh, I saw that and I was like listening to that. It just. It's crazy how advanced it's a digital world. Yeah. Because I actually sent one to Walker. I was like, You sent that to me. You sent that to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, When did this ever happen? Because I don't remember saying first it stopped like that. <laughs> how do you feel about the other, like the non AI edits? Like you mentioned that you see some of them sometimes. Like when you, mm-hmm. when you see like the fan compilations, what is that like? And it's like you in them. That's wild. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I think I like that. I like the uh, like the, the 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 Percy Jackson edits, like all of them. No, yeah, I I just think it's so cool that we get to be a part of something like this. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So um, we didn't get to quite all of the quotes, but we have to ask you guys sort of the central question here that we <laughs> we ask ourselves at, at Seaweed Brain Podcast, which is: Do you believe that Percy Beth? across its iterations throughout time is the greatest love story ever told? And if so, why? And if not, what's maybe your second favorite love story ever told? Walker, do you want to start? <laughs> I will start. I I totally agree with that, 100%. Because it is not like, it's such a, like, you just spend so much time with him growing up. Yeah, yeah. How do I explain this? It's just, like there's nothing that really hints to it. I mean, a lot. I mean, eventually, as it goes on and on, there's stuff that hints to it more and more. But like, at the beginning, you can just kind of feel that, you know, you can feel that connection, even though they kind of hate each other. But 
I think that's why they <laughs> have it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's that intense emotional connection. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And just the fact that it lasts so long, like five books. Yeah. And then more books. And then more. <laughs> and then five more. And then, and then three more. Probably. <laughs> Yay, three more. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Leah, thoughts? Yeah. Again, like I agree definitely. Like, because I was even thinking, like, as soon as you said, do you think it's your, like, the, the greatest one? Like, I was yelling in my head, like, yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> like, like, it really is because um, it doesn't, it's not like one of those, like, um, secretive things. Like, it's not like where I'm hating um, Percy every single second in public, but like, when we're like, together just by ourselves though like oh yes love you this love you that like it's not even like it's not even like secret public it's like slowly 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 in public you know you know what i mean like mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. i don't know how to explain it like it's like a it's like a wholesome thing it's not just like something yeah, that's like, yeah it's not like rock car let's get this like yeah it's not like that it's like <laughs> i came off wrong sorry i meant like <laughs> it, it's more like like you're starting to realize like oh like I actually do find the, uh, um, we're all older. Oh, I do actually do find um attraction in Percy. Like if like if that makes sense. Like I do too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Percy. Come on, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> let's be honest. Not joking. But uh, he's not that ugly. No. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Like that. That's a beautiful answer. Like, like you said, like it, it, they, their relationship develops with their community. Like as they're fighting this war with all of their friends and in front of the whole camp, there's a reason the whole camp is like, Percy and Annabeth, Percy and Annabeth, like push them in the lake at the end of The Last Olympian because <laughs> yeah. everybody was watching it develop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, no, I agree. It's not something that they were like consciously thinking about. Like, I don't think Percy ever thought about that. Actually... I think I think he literally says in the books that he has thought about it. Never mind. But, uh, <laughs> no, it's not like something that they're both aiming for. It's just yeah, like yeah, yeah. Fate, yeah. you know, it just happens. It's fate. It's like very unexpected. Fate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, thank you both for joining us on a school night. It's a Monday night, so we appreciate your time. Oh yeah, go ahead, Leah. I am so so sorry to interrupt. Um, but really, really quickly, there was actually something I was going to say that actually was like, I felt like it was actually like really, really good. We were talking about, oh yeah. Okay. Basically if it's already a lot of Percy Beth connections that you can like physically see in season one, then like mm -hmm. definitely in like the later seasons when it actually like when it's way more like, it's going to be so, so, so good. Like I'm really excited to do it, but like basically like, it's just mm -hmm. like. If you can already st start to see the signs of a lot of things now, then yeah. Just you wait, everybody. Uh -huh. Just you wait. <laughs> oh, again, thank you guys for joining us on a school night. Um, we really appreciate you spending some time to to think back on this relationship. And and hopefully in a certain amount of undetermined time, we can talk about Siren Bay. Oh, that would be, that'd be awesome. I love that scene. Yeah. <laughs> yes, man. Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. Yeah. I hope We hope that you get to shoot outside in the sunlight on the beach. Me too. And have a great season two. Thank, Thank you so much. So I'll, much. I'll probably see you guys then, right? Yeah. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Boat premiere. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Boat premiere on a yacht. <laughs> on the yacht. Can Top Gun, did Top Gun do that? If Top Gun can do it, Disney Plus can do it. We can do it. Yeah. They had a premiere on a yacht. <laughs> yeah. Tom Cruise like landed on it on a helicopter. Walker's basically Tom Cruise. I could do that. You're Tom Cruise, Walker. Please. <laughs> I don't need a freaking helicopter license. <laughs> Those things are for nerds. Oh, <laughs> have a great night, you guys. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Good to see you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.